Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Malthouse Games Podcast. My name is Delton, and this is a podcast all about tabletop games, board games, card games, RPGs, and everything of that sort. With me today is my wonderful co-host and wife, Haley. Hi there. So today we are on episode 13, which is kind of a lucky number for us because we were actually married on a Friday the 13th. A lot of people would be opposed to that, but that's all right. It's true for us. Also, our time of day was kind of, I don't know, what would you call that? Wasn't really unlucky. We got married at 7.06, which was? Technically 666, because it was six minutes past seven, so if, you know, the clock didn't stop at 60 seconds. So, it was cool. We're going to hell. Nah, not really, but it was in a donut shop in Denver. It was Voodoo Donut, downtown Denver, wherever that's at. And it was a good time, actually. It was a lot of fun. I know we've talked about this a little bit before, but, you know, it was good. And so 13's kind of a lucky number for us, not in the way that, like, you know, we're going to get it tattooed on our bodies or something dumb like that, which if you have that, I'm not really judging you, just slightly. We're not going to do that, but it's fun. Oh, yes, we are. Eh, maybe. But it's not all of that bad because, so, before we got married, my mom kept asking, is Jesus going to be in your wedding? Is Jesus going to be in your wedding? Because we're getting married at Voodoo donut shop on Friday the 13th and we were eloping and so my brother-in-law who was in the wedding actually wore a shirt with Jesus on it who was flashing the west side sign so yes Jesus was in our wedding and it even said that Jesus was the original gangster on his shirt so it was pretty funny and we both had cat shirts on but our minister did too so that's fine Yes, she was dressed as a cat had a long cat tail and cat ears on which was hilarious and not even planned that was not planned. She just showed up that way. I guess the every manager there at a Voodoo Donut uh, supposedly is supposed to be able to marry people pretty much on the spot. And she always dresses up. And she said she debated dressing as a luchador and then changed her mind last second to be a cat. And it worked perfectly because I had my space cat shirt on. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I had my space cat shirt on. I was thinking it was my you gotta be kitten me shirt. And then Haley had a cat shirt. So it just worked perfectly. Or was it You Gotta Be Kidding Me? I don't remember. I don't either. Uh, Kelton was wearing a space shirt, though. No, he had Jesus. Was it space space sweater? Oh, it was a space sweater. So, Delton, what are we drinking today? So the beer today, my friend Brian and his wife Jessica like this company a lot. They go to Kansas sometimes. I don't know if they just go to Kansas City or up to Wichita or what, but they always bring some of this beer back. So Brian gave it to us because it's really good. It is through Free State Beer, uh, Free State Brewing Company. It is Garden Party Lager. It looks like they're from Lawrence, Kansas. It's a 12-ounce bottle. I'm looking for an alcohol content. I can't find one, but it says, You are invited. Add a treat to your summer beer list, a garden party. Flavors fresh from the garden make it a celebration. Garden Party takes cool cucumber, bright fresh basil, and spicy juniper berries then marries them into a refreshing, festive lager. This is a limited release. It says, get some now and don't be late to the party. And I believe they put this out each year, or at least they did last year. Brian's hoping they put more out. It's a good beer, which we will taste. You poured yourself more than me. You took a drink before I finished pouring mine, so It'll it balances so I would out. Not cough. It balances out. Mm. It's a good beer. It kind of has a, not a tartness to it, but there's some flavor I can't put my finger on. It's the juniper. Is that what that is? Oh, yeah. It's very light and crisp and refreshing. It really is a good summer beer. Brian brought us some of this back in July, and it was the perfect summer beer. It actually cooled you off. Because some beer weighs you down, makes you feel hot, makes you feel heavy. But this is a very light, crisp, refreshing beer. But it's not refreshing in like it's Bud Light or actually hydrates you. It's actually refreshing in taste. It is. It's a very, very good beer. We like it a lot. So thanks, Brian, for that one, if he listens to this episode soon. It's a really good one. And we're also using the taster glasses, which I know we've mentioned before. But if you cannot tell, we're both a little bit, not sick, but our voices are kind of shot. Mine is much better than Haley's. Haley's has been bad for like two weeks now. I'm going through puberty. She lost her voice for a couple of days and finally got it back, but now it's a little raspy. We've been having issues with allergies here in Oklahoma. It seems that... Not only has the weather been changing a lot, I mean, it went to 80 degrees, and then it got cold and went to the 40s, and on and off. 
But then Haley developed a horrible cough because of it, and also it looks like the pollen levels here in the state are extremely high. So the allergens are really high for pollen, and I don't really have allergies unless they get to a ridiculous level, and so it's hit me pretty hard. It's hit Haley a lot harder, so we're a little raspy today, but nothing too crazy. By the end of the episode, I'm just going to be whispering. Either that or my voice is going to be about four octaves lower. Exactly, and so we're going to be editing out plenty of coughs today. It's bad because last week my, well, my voice sounds a little low today, but last week it was like down here because whenever my voice starts going out, it goes lower first for some reason. And so there's one day last week where I had to call a family of clients, tell them, hey, I'm not going to be able to come in. I ha- I'm stopped up. I'm blowing my nose more than I'm speaking. So I called them to try and reschedule and they didn't recognize my voice. They, they thought it was somebody else. When her voice gets low, it is kind of crazy. As you can hear, it's not quite the normal Haley. And whenever her voice is really bad and she's really raspy, it's pretty funny, but people never recognize her. We even went to eat at our favorite Thai food restaurant, Thai Delight, here in Edmond. And the waitress made a comment. She said, oh, your voice is really deep. And it was just kind of a funny thing, but they even noticed it because it's so out of character for her. But when it happens, it is significant. And like I can call and order a food at that place without putting my name or my number down. And they normally recognize who I am. for. So for them to you know, think I have a deep voice and catch them off guard, that's pretty bad. I can't order Thai food anymore. Exactly. Whenever, whenever they are like, who is this? What's your name again? Then you're going to tell them and they're going to be like, no, that's not really you. What are you talking about? Lies. I sounded like a sexy frog, at least. Uh, Ribbit. I mean, a frog for sure. Ribbit. Sexy smoker frog. <laughs> that's probably a little more accurate. A frog that's had way too many cigarettes. And I wouldn't say a sexy smoker frog. It's like the thinks she's sexy smoker frog. The one that's like aged past her prime. Rabbit. Even though you're technically not past your prime or anything. That's just the voice. I will fight you. That's the voice. Uh Uh-huh. Good save. Yeah, I thought so. But yeah, it's been, uh, aside from the allergies, we've had a pretty good time lately. Just playing some games. I actually won a game through a drawing that I wasn't aware I was entered into, which is cool. So on Facebook, I was invited to join a board game podcast group, which it looks like the main people that run it is the Tantrum House podcast. I've only listened to part of one episode, but they did a contest for everybody in that group, and I got drawn to win a copy of a game called Rankery. It looks like it's on Kickstarter now, but it looks like it's sadly not going to fund. Uh, Maybe they're going to redo it a little bit and throw it back on there. We'll see, but hopefully they make it. We have not got to play the game yet. Uh, It looks like it would be a neat little game. Nothing too crazy. I'm not sure if we're actually going to love it or anything like that. We're definitely going to play it and give it a shot. I mean, we won the game from a, you know, a competition or a drawing or whatever. So that's always really neat. Uh, Hopefully we like the game. And if so, you know, it's sad his Kickstarter is not going to fund. If he comes back and, you know, maybe we like it. Maybe we send him some like notes on it. Like, hey, this is what we thought just to help you out. If that helps. I don't know. That may be rude. Who knows? Hopefully he gets it and is able to get it kickstarted and actually make his game like 100% come true for him. That would be really cool. We're going to give it a shot. It's called Rankery. Haven't played it yet. Just opened it and looked at the cards. That's pretty much it. But that was neat. And then recently, we won a copy of Muse from Quick Simple Fun Games on Twitter, which was awesome. That was about a month ago. Uh, It should be here this weekend, I believe, which will be April 28th is whenever... We record this. This episode actually comes out a week after that. We should be getting it in. I think they either forgot to ship it or something, which is kind of funny, but they're sending it to us. It's awesome that we got to win that competition. I'm really glad they're sending it. I think the game looks like a blast. And then some of our friends, which we've talked about, Mac and Cass, actually won a drawing through Quick Simple Fun for a copy of De Still, which is about a Dutch art movement. I have not seen too much of the game. It looks like it's a fun, puzzly, modern art kind of game. And so I'm glad they got a copy because we get to try it out, which is going to be cool. And they'll get to try out Muse and we'll have a good time because that's what we do. We drink and we play board games. Also, if you hear Steve meowing in the background, that is your cue to take a drink. It is. If you're drinking coffee at work, if you're drinking water, if you're in the evening like us with a nice cold beer, take a drink if you can hear the cat after I edit. Because sometimes I edit him out. Why would you do such a thing? It's not intentional. It's with me. Removing background noise and cutting out little small things. Sometimes he just gets taken out in that process because I do most of it through a function. That's the first time I've ever heard you call Steve a small thing. 
uh, he's a fat cat. He was sure small in that video on Facebook, though, from like, you know, three, four years ago. Four years ago. Uh, he was actually skinny. Oh, uh, little fella. I love my son. You should post a picture of Steve on Malthouse Games again. I have before. I'll have to do something when this episode comes out. Be like, we talked about Steve, and then throw a picture up there. Oh, there he is again. He's a dumb cat. Okay. I think today we're going to go ahead and talk about something we like to do a lot, but sometimes we're really not good at it. Oh, here's the door. It's straight ahead. It's... It's a game. I am terrible at lying. Yes. Absolutely horrible. That's why, with the game today, we wanted to talk about something where you have to bluff and you have to lie, and it's really fun to catch people lying and try to get away without with not lying. Like I just bluffing games are fun. I enjoy bluffing games. So today, we are talking about a bluffing game that is pretty much 100% a bluffing game. Cockroach Poker. It's a German game that in German, I believe it is Kackerlocken. Kackerlocken? Kackerlocken Poker, I believe, which is just Cockroach Poker. It is through a company called Dry My Gear. It is by Jacquez Seemot. Seemet? Jacquez Seemet. I can never pronounce German names anymore since I haven't taken German in a while. It does not give me a graphic designer or an artist in this book. Sadly. Uh, It is a bit older game, though. It's from two to six players, and it's a really simple game. It is literally one deck of cards. That's the whole game. So how it works, you deal the cards out evenly between all of the players. I will say I do not recommend the two-player variant. It's not really very good. It's just you trying to lie to whoever you're playing with, and I don't think it's nearly as fun. It's Delton just lying to his spouse. Picture that. And I'm really bad at it, so she catches me constantly (laughs) about it. But I do not recommend the two-player. I don't think it's very good. But for three up to six, I think this game is phenomenal. You deal the cards out evenly to all the players. One player will pick a card from their hand, whoever the start player is, and there are a couple different factions, I guess not really factions, but uh, suits of cards. You have rat, cockroach, bat, fly, scorpion, stink bug, spider, and toad, or frog. They're technically toads, we call them frogs. Ribbit. Yeah, your voice is good for that one, right? Yeah, boy. So it fits in. What you do is you pick one. So let's say I grab a frog from my hand and I pass it to, let's say, Haley is at the table. Let's say it's me, Haley, Kyle, and Andrew, which is when we played this last. I pass the frog to Haley face down and I can either claim this is a frog or this is a scorpion or any of the other suits. Haley has two choices. Does she keep the card and try to catch me either lying or telling the truth or does she look at it and then pass it to one of the other players on the table? The key is, if she decides to keep the card, let's say I pass it and I say this is a frog, and it is a frog. If Haley says, yeah, you gave me a frog, and she's right, if she catches me telling the truth, then I have to keep the card in front of me face up. The first person to get four of a single suit face up in front of themselves loses. Everybody else wins. So this is a game where there's only one loser. So I can pass the card to Haley, say this is a frog, and she says, yep, that's a frog, you're right, then I have to keep it. However, if I pass it to Haley, I say, this is a scorpion. And she says, I believe you, it's a scorpion, but it's really a frog. Haley has to keep it. And that's kind of how the game functions. But like I said, instead of keeping the card, Haley could look at it, pass it to Kyle. Then Haley can either say, yeah, Delton wasn't lying. It's actually a frog, like he said. Or she can say, no, he was lying. It's not really a frog. It's a rat. Then Kyle is having to call Haley's bluff, or he can pass it to Andrew. The last person at the table to get the card has to accept it and either, you know, call, they basically have to call out the other person. Yes, I think you're telling the truth, or no, I think you're lying kind of thing. It's a really fun bluffing game. I mean, the entire game is just lying to people, and the best part about it is catching people lying, and then watch them get flustered and try again, and then you can notice what they're doing, and if they're lying again, if they're telling the truth again. It's just, it's really hard to play for me, but man, it is a blast. I feel like I'm pretty good at it, though. I'm pretty good at bluffing games. Haley's really good at bluffing games. I'm terrible at them. But Cockroach Poker is just so fun because anybody can sit down and play it. It's super easy to teach. Like I said, I don't recommend the two-player. It doesn't scale at two. But three to six, it plays amazingly well. It's not too long of a game to play. It's probably 10, 15 minutes at most. It's just super good. 
like Delton was saying, it's a really good way to figure out how people are lying or not. Uh, I like to use the game to figure out people's tells. So, you know, I know we talked in a previous episode what Delton's tell is. Whenever Delton stops drumming, that's when we know Delton is lying. Because between turns, Delton normally sits there at the table, drums, 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 drums. But whenever he stops drumming, that's when you know that either he is a traitor or he is lying. And so we played cockroach poker a couple of weeks ago with our friends, uh, Kyle and Andrew. And I watched Andrew play. I, I didn't really focus on Kyle. I was focusing on Andrew. And every time that Andrew was caught lying, the time that he played, he started by saying someone's name. So, Haley, this is a cockroach. Okay, Kyle, this is a scorpion. If he was not lying, he just said, it's a scorpion. It's a cockroach. But every single time he lied, he started with somebody's name. So I just felt really cool picking out his tell. And so by the end of the game, I knew exactly when he was lying when he wasn't. Of course, I let him know what his tell was afterward because I wasn't going to use that against him. But it's just fun figuring out what people's tells are. And you really can in this game. You can observe your friends and find out just exactly the small things that they do when they lie. Or the things they do when they tell the truth. I think that's something a lot of people miss about bluffing games is it's not only, okay, I can see what they're doing because they're lying, but it's also, I see what they're doing when they're telling the truth, because sometimes that does matter. Do you know what my either truth tell or lying tell is? I don't have a single damn clue at what your tell is either way, but I also never pay that much attention to people at the table. I'm usually in my own head trying to figure out what my next play is, and usually failing at the execution of that play. You saying you don't pay attention to your wife? I don't pay attention to anyone, sorry. I'm just digging you in all sorts of holes tonight. You're really trying to, geez. It's okay. Hershey digs holes in the bed. I dig holes in my relationship. Whatever. I'll dig your grave. Uh Uh-huh, I see how that is. But it's a fun game. I really highly recommend Cockroach Poker. Uh, I don't know what else really more to say about it. It's just so simple. You play it, you pass cards, you accept cards, you catch people lying, you try to figure out when they're telling the truth. And you just play. That's the game. It's really great as a beer and pretzels game, as we like to call it. Just sit back, have a snack in the middle of the table, obviously something that won't get on the cards, and then have some drinks and just enjoy it. Or put your cards in sleeves. Yeah, I'm a big sleeve fan when it comes to games like this. This is one I would recommend because it's a game where if someone can tell, hey, that's the bent card from last game, I know for a fact that that's a fly. Well, that's going to ruin the game. So I really recommend taking care of it, sleeving it, or I originally printed a print and play at work and cut the cards and put them in sleeves and just used them to play until we actually got the game. Uh, This was the game that I found at, uh, what was it, Tabletop Games and Hobbies or Games and Hobby in uh, Kansas City. I talked about that shop. This is what we got there and played, but it's just such a good game. I mean, you're lying about it. You're passing these cards and it's just so simple. I mean, normally I wouldn't like a game this simple. I know Brian wasn't a fan of Skull which is almost a more pure bluffing game than this one. But he didn't really care for that one. And I think I know why is because Skull really doesn't feel like much of a game compared to Cockroach Poker. There's something about passing someone a card and trying to lie about it or trying to tell the truth about it and make them think you're lying about it. That's what's so crazy. I don't know. It's just fun to bluff and it's fun to pass them. And it's just it's just fun. I really don't know what else to say. Well, the thing with lying games is that it adds more cognitive energy that you're using. Like if you are trying to you know, put on your customer service face or put on a face that's not your own, that's your natural face, you're having to use your brain's energy to do that on top of your decision making. So it wears you out a little more. It really does. I could see that a lot. You're using your brain more than just thinking about the next play or how you're going to place a piece or your strategy. You're actually focusing on how am I presenting this? How am I speaking it? What's the inflection and tone of my voice? How am I tilting my head or not? Am I squinting? And you're thinking about all these things. Which is probably why a lot of poker players wear sunglasses. Oh, it definitely is. It lets them keep that, that veil over their face, essentially. It helps them keep something covering up their face. I would not be surprised if some poker players have like a wink or an eye twitch or an odd blinking pattern when they lie. So they wear sunglasses to cover that shit up. They also wear hats a lot, which is weird, but, you know, I don't like hats. I have a huge head and I can't find any that fit. Uh. Don't mind you a cowboy hat. Please no. Just, just no. But Cockroach Poker, it's just great. Please check it out. I have not played with the Royals expansion. I think you can buy Cockroach Poker Royals, which adds something new. 
but I recommend it. If you can find the game, I recommend getting it. It's just super good. And I think one thing we really just appreciate about it is it's allowed us to learn something about ourselves or other people while playing the game. Hey, what can I get you? I'd like a topic. Any special way? Make it a top shelf topic. Coming up. Enjoy. So for the topic today, we wanted to talk about what we've learned about ourselves while playing games. This is something that I really had to think about, and it wasn't super simple. I could say something like, I'm not very good at lying. Well, that's not, that's not really learning anything. I've known that for years. Or my spatial reasoning skills are a little above average, but that's the best they get. But these aren't things that I didn't know already. Yes, I could say that I learned them in board games, but I didn't really learn them. I almost just rediscovered them, I guess is a way to put it, or uncovered them, one of the two. But I wanted to think about something that we truly learned while playing a game. And so for me, what I've determined is I despise, for the most part, I would say, despise take that mechanics in a game. Mechanics where you can be mean to somebody. Mechanics where your direct actions interact in a negative manner to an opponent. So I don't like it when you play a card and it just says your opponent has this happen. That's that's bad. They lose money. They have to discard a card. If it's something like Magic the Gathering, it makes sense. And that doesn't bother me. But when it's a game that's built on strategy and it's built on planning and it wants you to have a strategy and try to fulfill it in the most efficient way, I hate it when someone throws a wrench in that. It drives me up the wall. And I learned that games that have those kind of mechanics I tend to not keep. Any game that's mean has a high amount of conflict. Now, a little bit's not too bad, and it kind of depends on the repercussion of those things, too. If an opponent does something to you, but it takes them a whole turn to do it, that's not quite so bad, because yes, my strategy or my planning is put back maybe a step, so is theirs if they're taking their whole turn to do it. But it's the games that allow you to be mean and take that without a penalty. I think that's what really gets me. So you like the fairness factor? I think the fairness factor, yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. What does that say about you as a person? Um, I don't like being picked on. I'm a big old baby. I think that's the most accurate description, is I'm a big old softy, and I just don't want people poking me with sticks. (laughs) (laughs) At the same time, I don't think you'd poke others with sticks, though, too. It's not that you're a softie, it's maybe you're not an asshole. I mean, I think that's it. It, it, I don't mind some games where you pick on people. I mean, we have plenty of games. A lot of them have stuff like that. But it really just sometimes doesn't feel good. I would rather be doing something to advance my strategy rather than trying to hurt yours. Like I said, if it's something like Magic the Gathering, the entire game is against your opponent. That doesn't bother me because that is the game. It's when a game presents itself as this strategic puzzle but then you're doing shitty stuff to your neighbor just to hurt them in their path to solve this puzzle. I just don't like it. It's not, it's not something for me unless it's got a lot of fairness built in where being mean has a negative effect. I love stuff like that, but I think that's because it takes into account if you're going out of your way to be mean to this person and ruin their strategy, you're not going to have the best time now either. Like Cleopatra when you get the corruption tokens. Yes, even though you're not being mean to another player, In Cleopatra, I I wish this could somehow, I'm trying to think of a game that fits a little better, but in Cleopatra, if you use a card that has corruption on it, you take corruption tokens. At the end of the game, the player with the most corruption tokens is just knocked out completely from the game. It doesn't matter if you were in the lead or not. You're out. And I like games that do things similarly. Throw them to the alligators. Yes, you are. You're fed to the alligators, I believe is how that theme goes. Oh, crocodiles. We're in the Nile. I mean, they're basically the same thing, right? I believe alligators are freshwater and crocodiles are saltwater. Uh, they have different snouts. I believe the crocodiles that's true. more rounded and the alligators more pointy. I think swap that. I think alligators are saltwater and crocodiles are fresh. But alligators are in Louisiana and Al- Oklahoma. Yeah, but crocodiles are in like the Nile. Yeah, but the I guess uh, I don't know. I don't know my waterways. Who the hell knows anymore? I mean, the Nile flows south. That's weird. No, it flows north. See, I don't even remember. Ah. Talk Inund- more about trading in the Mediterranean games. Inundation. Oh, yeah. Inundation. Uh, yeah, I just don't like take that mechanics very well. It's not something I enjoy. 
And it's just, they're mean. I don't like mean stuff. I know if you ever watch Rado runs through any of his stuff, uh, Richard Hamm, him and his wife don't like mean mechanics. And I think that's something that I am on the same page with. Sometimes they don't bother me when they bother them, but I'm just not a fan of it. Haley, what's something you learned about yourself? Enough about me now. I just love to people watch. I think this is where I get my drama fix. Because I, I don't really feel like, like in high school or in college, I was really a part of any drama. But I love when we play lying games, making comments that stir the pot, that get people to start questioning each other, that get people to start accusing each other, and just watching. I love it. It's like my own version of reality TV. And like maybe if I had like, maybe somewhere, something deep inside of me wants to watch reality TV, but I get that fixed through board games because I get to see the drama play out between the players. I love watching people's interactions, which is why I like to look out for tells, which is why I like to f- try and figure out who the traitor is. I mean, everybody does, but I could go a whole game and just watch people. And I feel like I love to try and figure out people's motives and who people are. And seeing just how people interact whenever they think that somebody else is the traitor. What does that say about me, Delton? You're a serial killer? Maybe a little. I think that's the most accurate thing <laughs> that I could say. I see, I'm a therapist. It's not like I don't get looks in people's lives. And my job is very entertaining, fulfilling, and I'm around people all the time. I love being around people. But this is different. In board games, you're with your friends. And you get to kind of push your friends to see how they're going to interact. I feel like board games get you a really good read on your friends. I could see that. And then you could use it to win a game of cockroach poker. Ha ha. I know you tell. Or I can get you to believe that Kyle is bluffing you. Or Delton. That's very true. Haley is good at this. She loves watching people and figuring people out. Yeah. But this, I think this is the only time I would ever use it in any way. I wouldn't even say board games is maliciously. It's just using it to my advantage in board games. Yeah. Like just figuring out people and being able to understand their patterns and you know, if I say the right thing, I know that it gets Kyle to react in some way or it gets Delton to react in some way. I just, I eat it up. I, lo- I think that's what I like about board games, though, is I love the human interaction more than I love just the board game. Like, a board game can be awesome, but if the human interaction that it fosters is dull, then the board game's dull. To me, anyway. So now that we've gained insight about ourselves, I think we should talk about the insight we've gained from each other while playing board games. And now, join us. For a Malt House Games podcast special, bite size question. So, the question for today is What have you learned about somebody else at the gaming table or through a board game? What I've learned about Haley across the board game table, gaming table, card game table, whatever the table, Haley is that person that you're playing a deep, long, very heavy weighted. That's what she said. Thank you. Complex strategy game. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, my strategy is friggin sweet, dude. Like, I'm doing awesome. I've got all these plans. This is going to be my next play. This is going so well. And you look over at Haley and she's just going, oh, this has a cute picture of a flower on it. Oh, look at this little sheepy on this card. Look at the cute sheepy. And she's just being over there all lackadaisical, just almost lethargic, just hanging out, not really doing a lot. Just playing the game, looking at the artwork, chit chat, and all that good stuff. And then you get later on into the game. I just want to point out how much your head is bobbing while you're saying this. I know you guys can't see this, but as Delton is saying this, he put his hand on his hip and his head is bobbing from left to right like I'm a bobblehead. Well, I think it's accurate. Anyway, what I've noticed is you get late into the game and I'm over here struggling. My strategy is not coming together, I can't seem to get stuff to work correctly. I'm trying as hard as I can to get these points. And guess who's in the freaking lead? It's Haley. I've learned that she plays dumb, I think, or at least doesn't put as much, I don't want to say as much care into your strategy. That's not the term. You don't put as much, I guess, visible effort into the strategy. And you trick people. You're a little tricky asshole. You trick people into thinking you're not trying and that you're not taking it seriously, but then it ends up that you win and your strategy is somehow superior to everybody else's. And it is the most frustrating thing in the world because I don't mind it if two people are playing a game, something real deep, 
and they're both trying real hard and you can visibly tell that it's taxing on them and their strategies are tough and they get to the end and it's a tight game and it's like, all right, cool. That was a good game. You know, oh, I may have lost, but man, that was fun, blah, blah, blah. But then you play with Haley and you've been trying and sweating and just, you know, you're exhausted. Your clothes are soaked because you've been just sweating over these decisions. And she's over there playing with the frigging cat and she's 40 points ahead of you. And it's just super frustrating. But I've learned that Haley puts this facade of calm, relaxed, uncaringness when really she is dominating. It's my therapist face. I guess so, but shit, it's annoying. <laughs> Which brings me to what I learned about Delton. Oh, God. I've learned to understand Delton's frustration tolerance. Everybody has their threshold of frustration. Some people get angry at inanimate objects and throw their Xbox remotes against the wall. Some just get frustrated and walk away. Delton has a very low frustration tolerance. I think board gaming early in our relationship helped me to see where that frustration tolerance was and when to kind of back off and when to be silly and not let him win, but not be an asshole. Oh, I see. You're letting me win now, huh? <laughs> I said not let you win. Uh, I don't believe you for a minute. <laughs> you know that's not true. You know you play really well. When is the main time you've noticed my frustration tolerance? What are some? What's like the biggest game? Ooh, let me take turn around and look. Because that there's plenty of games on these shelves that have made me so frustrated when I think I'm doing super well and I just get dominated. The last time really was Feast for Odin. Like the last two or three times we played and I've won. You've gotten really frustrated. Well, that's when you win with 80 points and I've got 30. Yeah, that's frustrating exactly. when I'm trying as hard as I can and I cannot figure it out. And you're just like, dee, 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 dee. look at me, I'm a Viking. And then suddenly <laughs> you win with like 80 points. But I think I've had to learn to <laughs> work with it with you. <laughs> uh, we work well together. We do. As a team. Yeah. High five. That's how we're married for three years. <sighs> Shit, I guess. I, I didn't mean to make it like you. I let you win. Like, you win games. I just learned that whenever I win, gotta kind of play it down a little bit, or else we get real frustrated. Yeah, I'm a baby. It's okay. I already said I'm a big softy, and I don't like being poked with sticks, and sometimes I feel like I'm being poked with sticks when I'm really not. It's okay. Well, there's a lot of times you hand your, my ass to me. <laughs> you play mean games. I like whatever you and Brian will a lie, a lie, ally. <laughs> well, you're, pull, you're, you're, you're being me and pulling, pulling that up, from my definition book. Yeah, pulling up weird words. You guys would make an alliance in Rising Sun. Yeah, we always try to ally against Haley, but or, that's because she wins all the time. Or the, Twilight Imperium. But the problem is, we ally together. I'm all for it. Brian backstabs me to try to start going after Haley, and by that point it's too late, then I don't have the strength to go after Haley as well, and Haley wins anyway. So, it never works out. We should probably quit that strategy because it's just garbage at this point. What are you going to do? Again, it gives me two people to watch their interactions together as I play with the cats. Yeah, Haley plays with the cats and we just lose. I think that's a good closing point <laughs> for this episode. Jeez. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Malthouse Games podcast. If you would please like, share, subscribe. It is at Malthouse Games on pretty much all social media that you can access. We do have some YouTube videos and we'll be putting more up. We are most active on Twitter, but we also post on Facebook. We will respond to messages. And if you follow us, we would really appreciate that. Send us an email, contact at malthousegames.com. And as one final quick thing that I wanted to throw in, we have kicked on our pod pledge, our Patreon, and our Ko-Fi, or Coffee, K-O-F-I. We just wanted to say we would like to upgrade our quality. We want to upgrade our videos. We would like a computer that edits decently. And so to help with that, if you would like to throw us a dollar, throw us $2, throw us $3, you want to buy us a coffee, however you want to look at it, if you're willing to do that or you would like to do that, please go ahead and do that. We'd be very thankful for you. We will get some rewards and that kind of thing up where we can do shout outs and things like that. But for now, if you want to throw us a little bit, feel free. If not, that's okay. Just tweet at us or do something to show us you're listening. But we appreciate that. And pretty much any way that you guys interact with us, we're going to love. Because we love you guys. We love our listeners. It has grown exponentially in the past couple months, and we're super appreciative of it all. We're so grateful. It has seriously done great. So for now, we're going to sign off of this podcast and 
Hopefully you guys tune in for the next one and you're still enjoying it. So until then, sit back, relax, grab a drink, and play some games. Bye. That's creepy. See you guys later. Bye.